please pray with me? Holy One, I offer you this time, these words, and the hearing of them for the healing of our families, our cities, our country, and our world. Amen. Well, on Christmas Eve, if you were here for our beautiful candlelight service, you heard me read from the Gospel of John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning. Reminds us of Genesis, of creation, of God's let there be light, and it is so. The word of God as more than just a symbol, but as action, as something alive, a force of will and intent, and creative power. Caroline Lewis calls it God's creating word, the moment when God remakes God's self and is born into the world in Jesus. And now on this Sunday after Christmas, we read this letter to the Colossians. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your heart. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Gratitude. So I'm inviting you to play with me this morning in our worship. And for a moment, let's just imagine if our words took physical shape, what would that look like? If the things that we said, if we could actually see them, if our creative power, I, I have a little bit of an inspirational prompt for us in our imaginings. Do you know the Finn family movement troll? Does anyone? Well, obviously, that's her book. Um, but she's a Swedish, Tove Johnson is a Swedish author, and she writes about, they kind of looks like a hippo. Anyway, it's very fanciful. Um, you don't need all of the backstory, um, but there's a hobgoblin's hat. Uh, it's a top hat. It's silk. It's magic. When you put things in it, they change. So if you put in water, you get raspberry juice. I, I don't know why. That's, I don't know the rules. That's just what happens. And there's this part in the, in the book that Ellie wants me to read to you where, well, they're trying to trap this creature, and they put something heavy on top. They put a dictionary, and it is the dictionary of outlandish words. And then they wait to see what will happen. At first, nothing happened. They, they hid under the table, and they peeped out from under the tablecloth, getting more and more agitated. Still, there was no change. It was all rot, said Sniff. But at that moment, the big dictionary began to crinkle up. And in his excitement, Sniff bit the Himulan's thumb, thinking it was his. Now, the dictionary was curling up more and more. The pages began to look like withered leaves. And between them, the outlandish words came out and began crawling around on the floor. There's a picture. They're little. Goodness gracious me, said Moomin Troll. And there was more to come. Water began to drip from the brim of the hat and then to overflow and splash down on the carpet so that the words had to climb up on the walls to save themselves. So what would your words, outlandish or ordinary, would they creep? I guess it would depend on the word. Would it fly? What would it do? What kind of a um, menagerie would we have if all of our words, starting with mine, just kind of took shape? How long would they live? Where would they go? Would they be kind? Would they be cruel? I would love to find out. Let the word of Christ, ah, oh, that's a different word, dwell, dwell in you richly. 
What does it mean for us to embody Emmanuel, God's creating word? On the cover of your bulletin, I have a quote from one of my favorite theologians. She's a Catholic sister, Macrina Viedercare, and she says, In recent years, I seem to hear God say, Put your books away. Be with me. Trust your experience. She says, There are no experts in prayer. Only people who have been faithful to the ache. Why shouldn't our experiences be filled with God? Who do we think it is who is breathing in us? Where do we think this ache has come from? And has it ever crossed our minds that God, too, has a deep yearning for us? God has a deep yearning for us. I bet God loves Christmas. Because every year it happens differently. Right? We need something different, we grown-ups, at Christmas. And for children, the magic is different every year. Hopefully it never goes away. God's creating word all around us. In this letter to the Colossians, a New Testament professor, Dr. Amy Peeler, says that there are no singulars. The you here is all plural. God's creating word lives within us, not in isolation, but in community and relationship. And so, to live in a Christmas state of mind, her words, we need each other. We can't maintain that for very long without each other without a menagerie of encouragement and nurture and care. And so the theological reflection, the making of meaning from the text, that's each of our job to do, not just mine. And we could analyze how much time I talk versus how much time you talk and whether that serves us, I think. But what is true, and what was true in the early church, we see it here in Colossians, and we see it in the first letter to the Corinthians, when they talk about how each person brings something. This admonishing one another in wisdom and singing of songs, each person brings a psalm or a teaching or a prayer to build up the community. Trusting in their experience of God and the fullness of what God says in their life, in them. Every person brings something, and I believe that includes our children. So I asked Ellie what she would say if she was going to preach this morning. And she told me I could tell her answer. She's six. So here's a word from Ellie. Ellie says, don't worry about the future. Don't worry about anything. God is always with you. What would your message be? If we really had a format where everybody brought something, what would you bring this morning? And then if we each brought something, what would we say as church to the world? It wouldn't just be my words on the board out front, but it would be something we made together. I, I dream about that. I imagine that. Each of us with a thread And you not as an audience that I have to somehow produce for, but you as creating with me. And then my job is just to kind of like frame the loom and each of you bring a thread and we weave together the cloth of community. And my job is just to make sure that one person doesn't take over the whole thing and that everybody brings a piece of who they are. Maybe we already lean toward that, and we could embody it more. All of your words, however they might creep or crawl or fly, all of your expression, because what is it they say actions speak louder, right? Your eye rolls and your sighs, hands on hips, laughter, tears. Weaving that way, we clothe ourselves with community, 
the fabric that we make from all of your words and songs. Every word part of a tapestry. Some of us forget how important our words are. And we forget that when we don't speak, there's a hole in the cloth that it can't hold together in the same way. So to you, I say, speak up and use your words. Some of us are careless with our words. It's easy to talk, but hard to talk with skill, with wisdom and discernment and mindfulness. And to us, I say, speak wisely. Use your words. And still others of us are trapped in stories of the past about what we're allowed to say, if we're permitted to speak, be authentic. Use your words. All things are inventions of holiness, some more rascally than others. I'm on that list too, and so are you. You are an invention of holiness. You are the word of God, the creating word of God, spoken into this world. And it's only when the fullness of you finds a safe place to be uttered that God can be. You feel that? That we limit the size and the power of God when we hold back who we are or modify or pretend or keep silent. The reality of God needs each one of us speaking our lives through our actions, our expression. Every morning, there is my own cup of gladness, and there's that wren in the hedge above me with his blazing song. May our songs blaze, that together we may light the way for each other, for our world. Amen.